La ONU concluye que las elecciones en Venezuela no cumplieron las medidas de integridad y transparencia. El panel de expertos cuestiona que no se hayan publicado las actas, un protocolo de salvaguardia, de transparencia y que parecen muy difíciles de falsificar. Recuerde suscribirse a nuestro canal de YouTube si quiere estar informado y al tanto de lo que pasa a última hora. Recuerden también dejar un me gusta para apoyar en nuestro contenido y un comentario. Muchísimas gracias y sigamos con esta noticia. El panel de expertos de las Naciones Unidas ha sorprendido con la publicación del informe preliminar sobre su visita a Venezuela. En medio de la crisis se ha generado por la proclamación de Nicolás Maduro como ganador sin presentar los resultados desagregados por mesas. El organismo internacional difundió el documento que se suponía era privado para, la, para las autoridades electorales y el secretario general Antonio Guterres, en el que sus enviados al terreno reiteran que el Consejo Nacional Electoral no publicó y aún no ha publicado ningún resultado para respaldar sus anuncios orales. El grupo de cuatro expertos del organismo estuvo en el país desde unas semanas antes de las elecciones del 28 y partió días después. ¿Qué opina usted de esta información? Nuevamente los invitamos a suscribirse y activar la campana de notificaciones. Los invitamos a seguir conectado con las noticias de última hora. Recuerde quedarse hasta el final de este video. Gracias por estar acá. Noticias al día. María Corina Machado, welcome to our program. Thank you very much. Now you are one very brave woman. We're obviously not saying where you're coming from because you are in hiding. You are in Venezuela at the time when the the president is really going full blast on arresting dissidents, Operation Knock Knock, coming for them. I assume you're one of the victims or one of the targets. Are you not afraid? Well, at this point, uh, Christian, everyone in Venezuela is afraid for losing our freedom or even our lives. But above all, we are committed to, to make the truth prevail and, and popular sovereignty expressed in our votes be respected and get a transition to democracy peacefully and orderly so that can, our kids can come back home. So let's start a little bit at the beginning. Uh, it's clear from everything we read that the Maduro regime was absolutely convinced they were going to, that they were going to win and are even complaining that, hang on, we were betrayed because the poor people, the people in different neighborhoods, our usual supporters betrayed us. They said they were going to vote for us. What happened? What happened at the last minute? Well, I think what happened started months ago. Um, a social movement with very, very deep roots started emerging. It has its moment. It's a movement for redemption and liberation in which women, mothers, are in the first line. And uh, we were able to demolish all the areas that the regime had created among Venezuelans, dividing us in every single you know, idea, uh, black and white, rich and poor, left and right. And we, we managed to come together around common values, the family, our dignity, our freedom, justice. The fact that we want our kids back home, as I said before, this is, I, I would say this is the, 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 the center uh, desire that unites Venezuelans together today. So the regime lost total touch with reality and they lost their social base. And we came over with a movement with no resources, totally censored, persecuted. Our, our top campaign managers are either in prison or taking asylum in an embassy. Uh, And we were able to, to get this, you know, epic journey take place. And that day, millions of Venezuelans on July 28 came out courageously. And over a million of them had specific tasks to defend the vote. And it was simply extraordinary what they did. I mean, it certainly was extraordinary, and it certainly, as I say, caught them all off guard. So let's just clarify, because you are the leader of the opposition, but they banned you from running. Therefore, you backed uh, a, a different candidate. You backed Edmundo Gonzalez. And what you have done, I believe, is train an army of volunteers 
to actually go out, find the tallies, the actual vote tallies, to show the actual truth of what happened. Describe that operation for me, because, as you know, the Maduro regime, the attorney general, is accusing you all of lying and of having, you know, falsified those results. Well, the fact is that we have terrible experience, previous experience. Maduro has put in place sham elections for decades, dozens of them. So we decided that this time it was going to be different. We would have the proof of our victory. So we started over a year ago, identifying people, training them, giving them, you know, inspiration and, 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 and increasing the will to fight so that we could be in every single polling center. There are 15,000 797 of them, and every single polling station, it's over 30,000. And we we train them, we work with all political parties, civil society, volunteers, everybody was volunteered, and we managed to have people in every single one of them, not only inside as what they call polling monitors or witnesses, but actually to have groups of citizens, volunteers around the center protecting them bringing them food or water or coffee. And it was a, you know, incredible journey. Um, we started monitoring the process in the morning. We realized that there were threats to, to take our monitors out. So we had the communities push for them to get back in, and so they did. And at the end of the day, at 6 o'clock, when the, the, the stations start to close, we started receiving information through a, an application, an app, an app that read the QR codes, the tally sheets um, that were printed had. So we had the right by law to get a copy that is an original copy, an original document from every single electoral machine. And so we did. Many of our volunteers were persecuted, but we had the support and cooperation of members of the armed forces that worked uh, protecting these, uh, the electoral process. So we were able to gather them, to take them to safe places around the country. They were scanned, digitalized, and put into a web page. Is this the first time this has ever happened in Venezuela? Well, it really so is extraordinary. I mean, the, the story that you tell, the, the documents that you were able to redeem and publish is, as you say, it's the first time it's happened and it tells a story in black and white. Uh, I want to just play for you because I want to know what you think is going to happen next. And I want to go back to an interview I did with Maduro back in uh, Caracas in, uh, in, um, in 2014 about democracy. Here's, what, here's a little bit of that conversation. Are you concerned about forfeiting your democratic legitimacy? What uh, concern, my concern is to strengthen democracy. These accusations have been made for 15 years and they crashed against the reality of Venezuela. Tell me the country in, in, the, in, the, in the world with 19 elections in the 15 years. But it's not just elections, sir, you know that. You won your election, but it's not just elections. I'm talking about what happens in governance of the accumulation of power after well, election. Well, it is important to have elections course, in democracy. But it's also well, important what to do after those elections. We have a democracy strengthened at all levels. So uh, that was 10 years ago, and it appears that he's saying the same stuff, that we are the pre protectors of democracy. So what do you think will happen next? Is there any negotiation? Is there any way that you see as a transition out of what appears to be a stalemate right now with a violent crackdown? Yes, I would say that today is a totally different moment from then. Um, the, the regime is at its weakest position ever. They have lost total legitimacy. And what they have done is unleash a campaign of terror, persecution. I mean, even last yesterday, um, the fact-finding mission from uh, the United Nations denounced that there are patterns of crimes against humanity in what they're doing right now. Over 2,000 people detained, 24 killed. So what they're, they are going against are people which are right now in hiding all, all over the country. Um, but he's losing more and more support and getting more and more isolated on the country. We now have the legitimacy because we won and the world 
recognizes that we have won. So Maduro, uh, I think right now, is not reading correctly his own options. We are certainly willing to move ahead into a negotiation process in which we are willing to give Maduro and the regime the guarantees so that these could move so, uh, smoothly, orderly, as fast as possible. What guarantee? What guarantee? Well, there is a wide option for different people, and we certainly don't think we get you should get into details before a negotiation starts. What I'm saying is that we are certainly willing to do it. We will uh, start uh, as first point as a, that with a recognition of popular sovereignty expressed on uh, July 28th. And uh, we were certainly are willing to to call for the whole country, even the Chavista base, to come together in rebuilding Venezuela and stopping migration. Uh, one, one thing I would like to mention, highlight, um, uh, Christian, in just between uh, July 28th and August the 5th, uh, migration through Brazil increased seven times, seven times. So uh, we need to stop this. And the only way we can do that is uh, give a future of, of prosperity and freedom for our kids in so, their country. And so, that's what we are working on right now. I mean, would I know you're not going to go into details, but is amnesty one of the things that you would offer, put on the table? I, I think it's too early okay. to, to get into details. OK, so, but here's the other question then. Uh, you have said since the election, the regime could never have imagined that our movement would grow in numbers and slowly take over the entire voting base of Chavismo. The poor and rural people who fueled Hugo Chavez's meteoric rise are now disillusioned and have taken control of their future. So do you believe that is enough pressure that would cause him to actually enter negotiations? Or, as you've said, he has the military, they have declared themselves loyal to him, he has Cuban intelligence, he has the support of other nations who you just mentioned. What is stronger? Where does he place his bet? Well, I think, um, as I said before, he, he's not doing a correct evaluation of where he's standing. Uh, his situation is, is unsustainable. I mean, Venezuela will fight until the end, and, and we will keep on, you know, getting stronger and stronger. We will maintain our pressure in the streets. We call for a worldwide uh, manifestation this Saturday. We, we expect to be more than 100 cities around the world and many dozens of cities in Caracas, in Venezuela as well. And we will, uh, um, and we are reaching out to international community to press uh, Maduro and to show him that there is unanimously um, uh, position in the EU, uh, in the Americas, regarding that he has to let go and accept the terms for a negotiation, uh, negotiated solution. Um, how long will it take? Nobody knows, uh, Christian. For the sake of our people, uh, I, we are working really hard for it to be as fast as, as possible. But the important thing is that there's no way back. We will not uh, give up. We will prevail. And this is a total different moment in which Venezuelan society is united and the world, the democratic world, is behind us. Si no te quieres perder de los últimos acontecimientos que pasan en el mundo, suscríbete y activa la campana. Somos Noticias al Día.